this is what we want to do. Uh, showing us that is to let us see what we can do with that. So, but then I'm going to start from a claim page. I'm going to start from a claim page so that I can begin to type. Like I said, you can create a new code or page from here. Or if you like, let me see. Let me create a new a new notebook. Let's say new notebook now. I want to create a fresh notebook. And then um create a fresh notebook. So that we can do it together from scratch. So the first thing I want to do is to ensure that my 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 the data set I want to use is in my folder. So I'm going to come here and try to connect my folder. If you look at this folder here, I want to upload a file onto the platform, which then is giving me a dialog box that will assist me to trace the path of that file I need to import. So I'm going to click on stocks. This is the file I want to import. But meanwhile, I'm not importing it yet. It's telling me, ensure that your files are saved elsewhere. This, this runtime file should be deleted when the runtime is terminated. You know. That's what the first warning, you know, uh, Ola will tell you that your data is not finally saved here. So I have this thing imported here. I've not apparently imported it into the uh, collab environment. I've just put it temporarily in a, in, a, in a place here. So what you want to do now is we want to begin to type our code from here. The first thing is if you have your um, code, you have your uh, title this way, but then you, you, you want to do data language. One of the packages by Python, which you normally use for data language, is Panda. We call it Pandas. So the first thing you have to do is to do PH, P, PIP install. PIP install pandas. You know, it's, it's panda, it's pandas. So when you, once you click that, if that package is not there before, this guy should install it first. So straight away, I'm going to say we should go to install. But if you look at this, required already satisfied because you are working in Colab. So Colab already pre-installed for you. You don't have to bother yourself. When it's still whereby you are using a platform where it's not yet installed, you can install it. So I am going to move to the next thing. The next thing is now that you already have that package installed, the next thing is to say import, import panda, pandas as PD. That's just like an abbreviation that we're going to be using henceforth when we want to invoke panda package. So you are telling it to put it into the memory put a panda into the memory of python but as pd so that that way it will be very easy for you very handy for you to manage now the first thing we want to do now is um permit me to comment this out now so that by the time we are running the installation will not be coming again so to comment is ash like I, we used to know use ash to comment and then the next thing is you want to import your your data let us put a comment so that we can. I always like to annotate, annotate anything I want to do. Import data into Python. Uh, or let's say import data set. Let's say data set. This is set called stocks into Python. If you like, you can put this in code. So that at least if anybody is reading your code, without you being there, they can understand it. So, so let's give that name. That That's data set want to import let us give it any arbitrary name of our choice i like to use my data you know i'll just say pd dot read underscore csv this pd dot csv it's um is a function under pandas and don't forget we have already given panda a, a nickname that henceforth we want it to be bearing pd so that's why we are invoking this function reach.csv dot dot read underscore csv which is under pd panda so that's the command you have to invoke to uh, bring in your um, csv file but then don't forget when you write any function open and close bracket must be there then you put the name of the of the data sets of the data frame you want to import which in this case is what is stocks dot csv don't forget if you put capital s stocks if you put capital s at the beginning python is case sensitive 
you see where you are importing your data file from your data file does not have any capital it is all small letters so this is talks.cs but don't forget you have to put it in two quotes inverted um, quotes but that's not enough you have to specify you have to let it know that wait a minute this is from um, from a path within this environment i would normally call it um, an absolute path yes uh, something like that this is this is it so you have to put a front class that is coming from this particular environment that's all you have to do. let me read it for you again so this my panda is my own coinage that is where i want the data set to be stored when it is imported into python and pd dot read csv pd is coming from panda because panda is the one that house the function that will work for us to bring in our csv and panda has been given an instruction that oh henceforth i'm going to be referring to you as pd so anything whatsoever within you i'm going to be invoking it using pd so the function we are now using to just carry the, out the operation is just read the csv and then ordinarily when you write a function you must be there must be a an open and closed bracket and within that is the file name that you want to import and that is that let us click on go and let's what we're going to have okay what is telling us um, what is telling us there uh, import the asset first talks into Python. My data PD does read. Okay, let's see the error. It's always a uh, reading error also. It, um, it, uh, it said, okay, it's telling us. It's also one of the skills you need to understand. You have to read the error and know what it's talking about. It said, no such file or directory. Directory in stocks.cl. Okay, fine. Let's, let's remove this. Maybe you should see it, see it, or some of the time you should see it without putting that. Okay, you see it without even putting that, um, uh, that full, I mean, that um, front slash. So it, it's there now already as it is. But then some of the time it's important if you, if you save that to your file in a particular folder to put that uh, front slash, you know, that is that. So let's move on. It's already done. But then you cannot see anything, but ordinarily there is no error here as it is. So, but then what you have to do now is to now say, okay, print the content for me. Somebody is raising his hand. Do you want to talk? Let's hear you. Do you have any yes, okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. I think for my own concern, because I know the stocks.csv, I think, is in a folder called sample underscore data. So maybe in the part, five parts, can we say sample underscore data for slash stocks? We have resolved that, actually. We have resolved it now. It's not, okay. it's not in that folder. That folder is standing alone. Let's see. Okay. That folder is standing alone. Okay, okay, okay. It's These standing. Are the I was thinking the, the data is inside the folder. No, it's, it's standing outside that folder. So, but, but okay. then it's Thank you, sir. But if it was under that folder, then you have to put front slash that folder and then you're, you're, you're fine. So that's fine. So now, the next thing is we want to see it has done it, but then we want to see it in this environment. Um, so ordinarily you can, you can just say, my data and just run that if you just run that ordinarily it should run it for you without putting prints that's there you go we have it there that's our data set here let me see how i can maximize it i want to collapse this okay that's it there you go but then it's not going to show us everything from beginning to the end it's just going to show us the dimension see seven thirty rows and then seven columns that's the dimension that's the beauty of python the tool tell you give you the summary of what has happened so if you look at this we have the date here we have the open here we have the high here we have the low here we have the closed here we have the adjusted close here so everything is there in that but then some of the time we want we may want to put print to print out that um that data set it's the same thing you type print and you ask it to print it's going to print the same thing for you so so there you go there you go it's already there it's already there so so that's fine so we have been able to import this now successfully into our python but then the this is the first assignment if you are going to be hired maybe as a data analyst or as a data scientist they will give you a data to work with now, okay we have this data in csv can you take it into python and then carry out number one do this they might ask you to subselect 
the data set. So wait a minute, okay, you just need three of the columns. You just, just need three of the columns or just select, uh, we don't want all the 730 data, uh, records. Just select the first 300 records. Just do this, just do that and all of that. Then you'll be like, how do I do about it? So these are the things, the questions we want to answer from here. So the... We have done that. You can leave, you can, you can, you can inspect your data frame. You can inspect your data frame by looking at the info. You know, we can say, oh, my data dot info. I say press that. My data set, you know, that's your data frame. Your data frame dot info. To get info, info is a function. Also in Python. So once you say info, once you are running a function, you must have to put this open and close bracket. So let's see what this is going to give us. I don't want to print the tag again. Let me comment it so that um, it won't be giving us that as well. Then let me, okay, that's right. Let's see what the info is. Ah, there you go. Can you see this is what we have? It's giving us some information about that data set you have just, you have just named my data. And the info we have here, if you look at this, is also telling us the dimension, which is 730 entries. We have 0 to 729. If you look at the, the, the way Python number the, the locations, you can see that 730 entries are, are recorded from 0 location to 729. So when you are talking about this, there are about 730 entries apparently occupying position 0 to 729. So when you are referring to anything in, in 730, you won't see 730. What you will see is, is 730 is located in 729. Why? Because it's not starting from location 1, it's starting from location 0. So your first record is stored in location 0. So you need to note it because by the time you want to begin to subselect um, uh, columns, subselect um, rows, you can, you know, um, uh, refer to it appropriately. So if you look at that, it's telling us that uh, we have the date column and it's, uh, it's an object. We have the open, which is floating point and all of that. And then you have data types, floating point, 64, and all of that. And then it's telling us that the, the, the data set is occupying about 40 kilobytes of the memory, which is good to go. So let us, uh, if you like, let's say, to inspect, okay, to inspect our data set. That's what we have just done. And then I'm going to comment this out as well here now. Uh, then the next thing is to see, uh, we want to say, we want to look at the first few things on the, on the edge of that data set in terms of, we want to look at the, because we already know the headings of the data set where we are coming from. Imagine that you have not opened it from CSV, you don't know what it is, you don't know what the columns, what they are. So this is how to go about it. Just say my data dot head. I just want to see the the, the columns, you know, the first few, um, I want to see the first few headings of the, of the, of the data set. So here you can see, um, you can also put your comments in front to see the headings of, of the data set. So let's run this and let's see what we have. It's going to show us about, see, a few, a few, a few of the records, like, like five of that, how will, will give you like six of that? So this is giving us like five, and then showing us all the headings, all the headings of the data set. So that's fine. Yeah, I'm going to go. So, but then let's move on. So we want to see the, uh, we want to carry out some descriptive statistics on it. We want our data to be described. You just go back to your data frame, my data dot describe. Can you see, it's a, it's a natural language. That's, that's why I like Python. You know, you want it to describe your data as simple as just this code. So let me comment this out again so that it won't be giving us that. We want it to describe that for you. And let us see, it's giving us a description. You know, it's giving us a description of that data set. There you go. Because this is what you want to do. This is what you want to do. You want to see the count of each of the columns. So this is telling us we have 730 cans for open, I mean, we have open, 730 cans for all of them, you know. And then the mean of open is that 1,440. It's also giving us the mean for high, giving us the mean for, for low, 
and it's giving us the corresponding standard deviation as well. You know, these are some of the things that one ordinarily want to do to have information about the data set. You want to know the count, you want to know the mean, you want to know the corresponding standard deviation for that data set. You also want to know the minimum because this is one of the ways by which you can inspect your data set to see whether the, en the entries are correctly done. You know, because ordinarily when you want to input age, you are not expecting to see 700 in any data set. So once you see that the minimum is giving you 700 or giving you a maximum of 700 under age category, you know that there is a problem because we can't have another vector like again. So that, that way you want to look at the minimum and the maximum you are expecting from each of the products. That's why this command is very useful. Then it's also showing us the first quarter at 25%. And it showed us the interquartile at fifty percent, and it so showed us the the quarter. Um, or what do you call this? Uh, this seventy five percent. You know, it showed us that as well. So at a glance, at a glance, only by using out this command, that is what you are doing. And then at the same time, let's now say now that we want to now begin to sub select. We want to begin to sub select the data set because at the end of the day, once you have this data set, uh, if it's what to be a big data, for example, and that you have like um, like one million records, one million rows, and uh, let's say one thousand columns, yes, that's what you do when you are dealing with big data. One thousand columns. Say, for example, that you don't need all of the data set at any point in time to do what you want to do, you just want to cut part of that data set and begin to use it. So cutting that, uh, cutting that data set, how to go about it is what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you that again. Uh, I'm posting the, our YouTube channel again in case if you have not um, connected. And when we come back again, when we are logged out, uh, I'm going to post the link to our WhatsApp page so you can join us there. But then I think we still have seven minutes to run before we are done. So, if you look at that, if you are, you are asked to subset, this is what you have to do. Imagine that you are asked to just print out only three columns. You just want to select three columns and uh, you know three specific columns that already have their names. Let's say open, high, and low. Let's say that is what you want to do. Let me put the end of what you want to do. Um, selecting three specific columns. From the data set, including the display of all rows, including all rows, which is also records. Rows are called records. So this is what you that's it. So what you have to do is you have to make up, you have to give it a name, a name where that selection will be stopped. So for me, I want to call it, uh, I want to call it my data, my data select. My data, let just see my data select. Okay, you can look at okay, select. Dr. Amelia, I can see you two seconds. We are glad to have you back. We are, we are glad to have you back. So I'm going to say select. So if you do that, that is the name, that's my own coinage. Now the name of your data set is my data. That's the first you are going to do. And then you have to bring in two angular brackets. Two angular brackets. I don't know why they make it to angular brackets. So generally, I want to work. <laughs> but we experiment together. So now we already know the file names we want. Let's say we want to we want to open uh, open. We want to select open, which is part of one of the edits. That's the difference. We want to select everything must be in double quotes. Don't forget. Another one want to select um, I, and then want to select low. Okay, so. Uh, yes, let's say that's what we And there you go. Once you let me let me block this, make this a comment so that this is only the idea. So let us run this now and let's see what it uh, Now our cell is successfully done. There's no error. But then you won't see anything yet unless you bring out the where the thing is stuck. This is where the, the guy is stuck. You can copy it. And then you say run. Once you run that, let us move this again. Let us run this. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, so there you go. That's fine. That's fine. So, so that is it. 
So it's already stored now. That output is already stored in my data set. Open is stored there, I is stored there, and low is also stored there with all the data set, you know, from one from from one up to seven there. But don't forget, stored in location zero up to location seven hundred and twenty. So that is fine. But then you also want to um, you also want to you also want to do other things. Maybe you just want to select the uh, records 10 to 15. You just want to select records 10 to 15. This is what you're going to do. You just say, um, let's say, let me, let me comment it out. And then you want to select from uh, records 10 to 15. Okay. Um, you have to give it a name as well. My data rec. Let me just say rec. Rec. Just rec. Uh, we want to select 10 to 15 now. So what is it my, my data rec? You are going to invoke, don't forget your, your data frame has to come from because that's where you're coming from. It's already stored here. So my data and then your bracket again. Open and close. Uh, this time around, I think you can use a singular bracket. Just say record 10 to 15. If you run that, this is what you have. And don't forget, like I said, you have to run this out. You have to let it come out. You can print it or you can just copy it and just print it like that. <coughs> now, record 10 to 15 is left. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17. Oh, like I said, don't forget, so the 15th record, this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This will be like minus 1. So if you want to see 10 to 15, yeah, it's, 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 it's 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. It has, to be, it has to be like uh, 10 to 16 now. Uh, you remember, you know what I said in the location, you know? 10 to 15, that is it. So that is it. Or if you want to say, let's say 50 uh, or 50, 50 to 100, our 100 will not be 1 to 1. Don't forget, 1 to 1. <coughs> so that, can you see? 100, uh, beginning from. Uh, Beginning from 50. That's very good. So if you look at this, you have sub, you have sub selected 100, I mean 50 to 100 records stored in my data dot rec. So when you want to run anything on this, this is a smaller version of a bigger data set because the data set is still there. The bigger one is still there. You can fall back to it. So but then there are some things you want to run that your memory will slow down and you don't want to do that. Just cause part of that that you need and run it. Even do you know payroll, for example, when you have a payroll, for example, and you just want to do promotion for some people, or you have, they have done promotion for some people, and personnel are requesting for the data set of those people that are concerned that they want to take it to salary for them, for their salary to be upgraded. This is what we have to do. You know, this is what we have to do. We can't do that demonstration of such care now. But then in our subsequent uh, classes, we are going to see. How from a, a personal data set, we want to select people that have been promoted so that we can forward their salary and their corresponding new grade level to account or the first department to effect changes. You know, this is what you have to, and this is what will be expected of you as a data scientist to have the grip of how to select data sets. So let me quickly do, okay, we have less than one minute more. Um, I want to see if I can select um, 